Hello my lovelies and welcome to a new project and tutorial with Dixie Bell, Bells and Whistles, Woody Band and with me, Angela from Elf von Helden. Today we are going to transform this little bench. This darling was used as a requisite at the theater and has been painted over in its career, um, I don't know for how many times. All right, so let's roll up uh, our sleeves and let's get started first with a good clean with white lightning. Then I try to master the layers of paint by stripping, sanding, stripping, sanding and cleaning again. Um, didn't get all of the paint layers down, so I will work with uh, just what we've got here. Since I have a light color in mind for this project and I notice when cleaning that the piece is a bleeder, I first use Boss in Clear by Dixie Bell for priming. Boss is a blocking primer that seals in both tannins and unpleasant smells. It's water-based and is wonderfully easy to work with. It basically comes in three colors, in clear, in white and in gray. By the way, if you have any questions guys, please feel free to write them in the comments and I'll be very happy to come back to you. Of course, there is almost no project without my beloved Woody Bands. Today I use the ornament set Woody Band 1520, which comes as a pair. If you don't know Woody Bands yet, the basis is actually wood dust and they also behave like wood when cold. You can saw them, you can sand them, you can drill them. But when they are heated with a hairdryer, heat gun, embossing gun or a griddle, they become flexible, allowing them to adapt to any surface or shape. You can even cut them when they are soft. They can be painted with any type of paint and even treated with a wood stain because they are porous like wood. It also doesn't matter whether you paint them before or after applying to your project. That always depends, you know, what you have in mind. After I have, uh, rewind, after I have heated the woody band with a heat gun, uh, I'm applying wood glue on the back evenly to cover it. Uh, you use wood glue no matter what surface you apply to, metal, wood, glass, plastic, it doesn't matter. I prefer to use the quick and thick from tight bond because it has good initial adhesion and the ornament doesn't immediately, immediately slip off even on a vertical surface. When I've coated the back well with the glue, I press it onto the project, heat it up again with a heat gun so it, that it becomes flexible again, uh, in case it cooled down and stiffened up again. Now I can press in particular the edges onto the surface nicely. The details of the ornament are actually not damaged when you do that. And at the end, it basically looks like this ornament has always been there where you just place it. This is the great advantage of Woody Band, which is available in a huge number of large and small ornaments, flourishes and trims. Any excess glue that squeezes out at the sides can be easily removed with a damp cloth, a baby wipe or a damp brush. Today I'll work with the Dixie Bell Terra Clay Paints and the Terra Clay Paints are water-based and contain clay, clay particles instead of chalk. The special thing about these paints is that they can be reactivated with water at any time as long as they have not been sealed and they do not level out brush strokes, properties that are particularly desirable in creative techniques. Of course, I've got another color in mind that uh, doesn't come in the terrace. I want to have a color that comes close to the apricot from the chalk mineral paint line. However, since these paints can be um, mixed with um, one another, this is not a problem. Here I use the colors Bougain Billier, uh, Daffodil and Prairie Dawn from the Terra Clay paints. I mix the three together until I'm satisfied with the shade. And of course, as usual, I didn't measure. Um, I was roughly using two parts, each of Daffodil and Prairie Dawn and one part of the Bougainvillier. For painting, I choose the La Petite from Dixie Bell brush. Um, it is um, a natural bristle brush, or better saying um, half natural bristle, bristles and uh, synthetic bristles, and it behaves like a natural bristle brush. I like to work with a dampened brush, so that's why I um, spray it with water before I start painting. And I'm painting the whole bench upside down, you know, all the way around, first with the, you know, with the color uh, we just mixed.
On the top and around the woody bends, I set a little highlight with Prairie Dawn. After I've let the paint dry overnight, it's time for the second layer. Even uh, the first layer had a good uh, coverage. Um, I like to always do two coats just to change eventually some areas I didn't like on the, on the first coat. So this time I use the Dixie Belle Best Dang brush for the highlights with the Prairie Dawn. With this I can achieve a little more of a cloudy and irre irregularly oy, difficult word for a German person, but you know what I mean. Um, well, just like a faded effect, basically. When it's all dry, the fun really begins. Now the galaxy, a deep dark green, comes into play. I mixed vinegar with water in my spray bottle and um, this gives a little bit of a different effect to the paint. It just doesn't run. It uh, separates a little bit. So um, that's the effect I want to achieve with it. So first I spray with the vinegar mixture and then I use my Dixie Belle Mud Spatula to apply the galaxy. Picking up a little paint with the front edge, I pull the mud, mud spatula with the paint out of the corners and down the edges at a flat angle, wherever basically the natural aging, aging would, um, would take place. And I do the same thing also around the woody bin ornaments. While doing this, um, I hardly touch the surface at all with my mud spatula. To get the color to work even more, I help with my vinegar mixture and my fingers. The mud spatula is made of plastic and is therefore gentler on the painted surface than a metal spatula would be.
the next step, I use the mud spatula again, and this time with the Prairie Dawn. I now apply this irregularly, <laughs> partially over the bench to create a flaked off look. Here I distribute the color in different places until it runs almost dry on the spatula. This creates differently covered areas and gives it more of like a, like a chippy look. So since the terra clay paints can be reactivated with water unless sealed, I always recommend simply applying a coat of uh, um, a coat over top coat once you've reached a stage where you're happy with the status quo and you don't want to change it anymore. Of course, you can still paint over it afterwards, but uh, nothing of the layer below will, will be changed anymore. In this case, not only I'm happy with the current status, I have planned to work with a transfer from Bells and Whistles. Each transfer brand has its own recommendations for you, so please keep that in mind if you decide to work with a different brand. The Bells and Whistles transfers can be applied directly onto the chalk mineral paints or the silk paints without any problem after drying. However, the Terra clay paints are um, even more open porous, so prior sealing with a top coat is recommended. I sealed here with the Terra seal and let it dry again. I chose the cotton and eucalyptus transfer with beautiful eucalyptus leaves and cotton blossoms. Transfers are wafer-thin self-adhesive foils that can be attached as a whole in parts or even layered. They merge with the background and in the end look as if the motif was hand-painted onto the project. This thick milky film that you can actually see is um, just a carrier sheet. With the help of the transfer stick, I rub, rub it off the carrier sheet basically and transfer it onto my project. Think about where you want to place the motif and once you've put it on, uh, you've got to commit. Um, it's, it's recommended not to move it again. The transfer usually sticks to the surface immediately and if you pick it up again, um, you take the risk that um, it already stuck onto the surface and this, this may you know, tear a gap into the motif. If you look closely, you'll see that I'm rubbing with one hand and lifting the backing paper slightly or the backing foil um, slightly with the other hand so I can see whether the transfer has already been transferred to the project. If a spot is still stuck to the carrier film, I just put it back down and rub it again until also, you know, the last little bit is transferred from that sheet. I'm working my way from one, from one end to the other and um, you can also work from the inside to or from the middle to the outside but uh, I would not recommend to you know work from one side to the middle and from the other side to the middle because then you take the risk of creating a crease in the middle. With this project I only use a small part of the this transfer and there's like you know more projects to come with the same transfer I've just used here. <clears throat> If the transfer has completely detached itself from the carrier film and is on the project, I take the carrier film and just rub over the transfer to make sure that there's no bubbles and, you know, basically, you know, it, it's stuck to the surface nicely. You can do it with your hands. Um, I'm not doing that because my hands are mostly, most of the time I use hand cream and, you know, cr you know cream doesn't go very nice with painted projects.
So finally, um, at the end, when everything is down, I use my Dixie Belle finishing pad to massage and blend in the edges that have like a, a small clear surrounding just to blend it in completely into, into um, the project. At the end, I sealed the bench with Terra Tough, um, a strong and water resistant, water based top coat from Dixie Bell. So now it is well prepared either as a flower bench or even as a little seat. That's it, my lovelies. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this little project and maybe it inspired you a bit. I hope so. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'll be very happy to help you. So take care, guys, and um, I'll see you next time. Ta da, bye bye.